sector. And at the same time, we also make an assessment of the challenges, the local challenges. Because even though the sector is one, there are also unique challenges in some of the factories. And that's why we start our visit with a meeting with the board to be able to understand uh, the local situation in their own factory, even as we discuss the cross-cutting issues. And sometimes the cross-cutting issues are also informed by a local situation. Because remember, national, the national level KTD is a management agent that is managing on behalf of the local factory. So the local company, we must also listen to them and understand their challenges. So that's why we start with those meetings. So I just resumed the tours that uh, we were going on. There are factories who are not, we were not able to visit and they have been asking us when we will visit. Here in Nyeri, we never visited uh, Yadudi and Chinga. That's why we are visiting them today. Uh, we have improved on management and efficiency at the local level. At the same time, they also tell us what we need to do to uh, restructure KTD at the national level. Uh, so, so those audits are ongoing, they were undone, Team board was not satisfied with some of the results and even the factory somewhere. So we sent them back to go and dig deeper and, and come up with reports. We hope in the next two, two weeks or so we should be able to get the reports and then we can, we start, uh, we can start uh, implementing the recommendations in those, those forensic audit reports. Uh, so that's it, really. Uh, and of course, we are also communicating some of the gains that the reforms have given. For instance, the increase in terms of monthly earnings to the farmers, the increase in terms of minimum bonus that they are receiving now. Different zones are receiving different figures, but there is an increase. And of course, ultimately, we believe, and we're looking at the numbers, we know there will be also increased earnings in the final bonus that we have declared should be paid in July uh, this year. So overall, the reforms are bearing fruits in terms of impacting on the farmers' earnings. But the journey is still, is still continuing with the journey. We haven't reached where we believe we should be. Some of the reforms that could also have impacted very well with the farmers are hampered by the court cases. For uh, example, the value addition the component, we and agreed in our reforms, and even the team bill, we put a provision there for us to work out on a journey of value addition to extract more earnings and more value from our petty value chain. This has been done in other countries like uh, Sri Lanka. And we had given targets to the buyers, the, 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 those who are buying tea and selling. We had given them targets in the law, but this was stopped by the, by the courts. And uh, this is one area we want concluded soon, soonest. And I don't know why it is stopped because KTDA withdrew. The, the director said in their, in their, in their annual uh, general meetings that they don't want any cases. But you can see cases are still being entertained in the courts because the cartels are still there. Those who think the cartels are gone, they are not gone, they have just retreated. The cartels have just retreated. But we are pressing on to the mark. We know, we believe one day, the Kenyan tea farmer will also be able to have autonomy and a say, total say over what happens to his tea. Instead of other people out there deciding what happens to their, to their tea. And, uh, in my car, I have a package. I, I should have brought it. I don't know whether the car is here. You see it. Where you have a, a tea packed. Tea packed in, uh, in Iran. And if you look at the packaging, it's written tea from the gardens of Ceylon and India. A big pack, red. If you go to the fine print, you will see it's tea, it has tea from Kenya. So they have taken poor quality tea from those other countries, blended with the Kenyan tea, and then selling it, passing it as 
Ceylon and Indian tea. So this is the value we are losing out there in the market, where our teas have no visibility, have no recognition, because we have been stopped from taking that journey that we need to take of value adding our tea. Uh, so that our brands, because we produce the best tea in the world, Kenya produces the best tea in the world, it's a fact. Which, that's why it's used and that's why it's sought after and that's why we have strong cartels in the sector. Because people want to benefit from that value without transferring that value to the farm who sweats to grow tea in the farm. And it is a pity that we were stopped by courts from doing that work. So even some of these politicians who keep dancing all over the place, these are some of the issues they should be addressing. Hmm? You can continue promising people money. You go out there and say, oh, I'll give it, I don't know how much in the budget, I'll do this. But money don't, does not solve us problems. <laughs> for, for money to solve our problems, you have to make the hard decision of thinking out the solutions. So you don't throw money to a problem. Because we've been doing that for many years. <laughs> Sometimes we even complicate the situation, even make it worse. Because what we are lacking is not money. Look at this tea, tea bag. It's called family black tea and picked from the tea gardens of India and Ceylon. So this is selling in, the, in India, in the Middle East, as tea from Ceylon and tea from Ceylon is Sri, Sri Lanka and tea from India. Go to the fine print. That is in English. You see all the other things they, they say about making the tea and all this. Then they say combination of tea bags, Indian and the Kenyan black tea. Is there anywhere Kenyan tea mentioned here? So that's what we are saying. That's what we are saying we have a problem. And those are the problems we are saying we must fix. Even this issue of Kenya shilling struggling. Why is Kenya shilling struggling? Kenya shilling is struggling because for you to strengthen your currency, you must improve on your exports. You must export more or at least have a balance between what you are buying from outside the country and what you are exporting. The biggest exports of Kenya has been our cash crops. Tea, coffee, horticulture. Now if you don't support those sectors to continue supporting the balance of payments, and uh, you will support them by extracting all the value you can from them. Uh, then you continue having problems. If you also don't manufacture locally, some of the things you don't need, you can manufacture locally, then you have a problem. And in, in the industry, Ministry of Industry, that's what we are trying to do, but we are fought again by the cartels. <laughs> the cartels that uh, survive on just buying whatever they can buy from the, the country, exporting jobs, putting jobs. You understand? So we've done a lot of work. We've moved forward, but we are saying there is still, we are still a long way to go in terms of transforming the tea sector, in terms of transforming the coffee sector. Coffee sector is still heavily ran by cartels. You can see even the bill in parliament that you want to pass, that you went through public participation. It's stuck there. And you know why? You know why? If you look at our coffee, the biggest buyers are three, three farms, three farms that control what we export in, in coffee. And uh, so still, even, uh, even as we have main gains, there's still a lot that needs to be done. And uh, we need the political class to focus more on finding solutions. Instead of the usual drama that comes during elections, and then the population is still left, sometimes worse than it was at the beginning. Yes. No, le, le. Yes. The country has a challenge in terms of the cost of inputs, not just fertilizer. 
And it's not just the country, it is all over the world. Kenya is not an island, especially as I said at the very beginning, if you are a country that relies more on imports, if you rely on imports, we import, our fertilizer is largely imported. We've not built a capacity for producing our own local fertilizer. When there are shocks out there, especially fertilizer is, 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 is we use fertilizers that are phosphate based. We don't have sufficient deposits of phosphates in the country. So we rely on Russia, Ukraine, uh, Saudi Arabia to get our raw material, to get our fertilizer. When there is war there, when there are disruptions, like the disruptions that came due to COVID-19, transport uh, logistic disruptions that are increased the cost of shipping, uh, that is born, the brand is bought by the, by the farmer and by those who are using those inputs. So the government is grappling with all that challenge because it's a cost of everything. Anything that's impacted by, by imports, uh, cost of fuel, cost of uh, cooking oil, for example, uh, cost of things because once you fertilize our energy, costs go up, everything else has a tendency to go up. And it is not a Kenyan problem, it's, it's a, problem, a global problem. Those who watch social media, you see even where there are people, you know, TikTok talk of where even families are controlling how much you can use in the, you know, from, from even the Middle East and Europe. So it's a big global problem. Does that mean we shouldn't address it? It has to be addressed and the government is looking at ways and means of addressing it. The trouble is the costs are very high. For fertilizer, for example, impact on the prices to where they were last year, we require around that one billion Kenya shillings. Do we have that kind of money? We have it. When, when uh, revenue sources are limited, uh, where do we get that kind of money? These are, these are the conversations uh, that we should have. It is not to be about blaming. You want to blame government, you are a politician in parliament, you want to shout and blame government. That you are sitting there, you, you are making a budget. Concentrate on finding a solution, supporting government to find a solution, not in uh, trying to run away from the problem because you are part of it, you've created it also, you are part of the problem. Uh, budget making is, is now shared between parliament and national government. National government doesn't make budget entirely on its own. If it does, then the budget should have been concluded, but they have, it's not been concluded because parliament is, is not satisfied with some of the things they want to sort out. So it is a dual mandate. Before the 2010 constitution, it was largely a government budget. Now it is a parliament, parliamentary budget, a national government budget. So we need to strike a balance. Can we be able to raise that one billion to subs subsidize fertilizer? I don't know. That's a question that needs to be discussed. If we were to subsidize all the fertilizer, we have been able to subsidize some of it, like coffee. We are already running a subsidy of government paying 40% is something we had planned earlier. 40% uh, or coffee farmers are able to access that, those who want, those two societies are, are already accessing. We are subsidizing uh, potatoes. We also have farmer paying 60%, government paying 40% uh, for, 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 for potatoes. Potatoes, people are asking why. Potatoes is the second most value, important uh, uh, food crop in the country after maize. We've been also subsidizing maize for a long time. Now, these are small budgets, not big budgets. For us to subsidize maize and all others, we require the figure I've given you. You know, government has also been subsidizing fuel. Uh, and even the current budget is some money there to go into the, the fuel subsidy. So, so, what we are saying is it possible to, um, to, to subsidize all these things? This is a conversation we require between Treasury and, and Parliament. It's not a conversation the Minister for Agriculture can handle alone. I've said the audit are ongoing. The preliminary reports are already there. They're out there. We, they were given share with the team board. Uh, and the factory management, the boards there, they have reviewed them and given their input. 
So the only task I'm back in the field to, to sort out some of those issues raised by the, those audits. Now, I can't tell you the findings because there is, there, there is as many reports as there are factories. So maybe you need to ask the chairman of this factory, for example, to tell you what the finding is. One of the findings here, for example, in this factory, you have this factory with a heavy debt that it has borrowed, heavy debt. But they have also their money invested. So the question is, why would we invest money and go and borrow more expensive money? These are some of the issues that these reports are informing us. Banned decisions being made. We don't know motivated by what, but decisions made in the past that have an impact on the earning of the farmers. Where a factory borrows a heavy loan, yet it has its own money invested somewhere, earning less money. Why not utilize that money before going to borrow? Uh, the other issue we are looking at and we are working out a, a problem is this issue of debt, which is very heavy for all factories. Is there a way of uh, restructuring those debts? Is there a way of buying them? And we are working out with Green Feather and, and KTDA to see if we can borrow less expensive money buy those debts so that farmers' debt uh, burden is reduced and then the factories are able to run. What is the effect of uh, tea group, tea, tea in the tea market? Tea, tea that's been in Kenya, you think, on grain prices in, in Kenya in last week? Yeah, I explained the other day that the impact is, is not, not that big. There is some impact. If you look at last week, the prices dropped. The prices uh, and some drop, but not very significant. But we are monitoring the situation. We believe, given the fact that now we are also in a dry situation, we may not, the production is not very high, uh, the projections are that the, the prices will be stable. And we are looking at whatever that needs to be done to cushion the farmers to make sure that the impact is not drastic. Because if the impact is very high and there is also an impact on fertilizer, you can imagine the situation. Santen is Thank you. Thank you. What's your government? <laughs> <laughs>